What if I told you that we are only in the third inning of the real estate and mortgage slowdown? Now, I won't profess to know the future, but what if you knew we were in only in the third inning of this contraction, of this slowdown, of this correction? How much more would your behaviors change? Lenders and realtors alike, companies and individuals can answer this question individually and collectively, and I think the short answer would be massively. Our behaviors would massively change if we all knew that we were only a third of the way through this. Companies, hiring and cost-saving exercises would change. Loan officers and realtors income producing activities would change massively. Instead of taking time and enjoying the slowdown, their nose would be to the grindstone because they know they still have two thirds of the way to go and what they saved in 2020 and 2021 wasn't enough to get them through. Think about it team, it's not a crazy question or concept. There was a lot of data and comments that came out this week that point to many more months of pain and higher rates. Do I know the future? No. but. The more I think about this and the more I test this theory against data, the more I believe this could be a thing. Hear me on this. Do I hope for more pain? No, of course not. But could there be? Absolutely. We are coming to the end of summer when the typical slowdown occurs in listings and thus mortgage closings and the summer run never hit. Listings never took off, lagging year over year and never getting the summer bump. We take that negative momentum into fall, winter and 2024. And as you can see, this is not just a 2023 problem, but a growing problem for some time. As Logan pointed out on CNBC, no new listings hitting the market rushes demand as sellers become buyers and it feeds the real estate cycle. We're just not seeing this right now. And I'll unpack that further in a minute. But a few more data points that could point to us being in the third inning of this from last week was the Fed comments about the future and the Fitch downgrading of the U.S. debt. Now, I agree with many economists here. Much to do about nothing and more of a look back on the debt ceiling challenges that we had earlier. But it does highlight a growing problem that we don't seem too concerned with, which is massive debt that continues to grow at an alarming rate. We will help you visualize this real quick to help this really sink in again and not the end of the world, but as Barry pointed out earlier this week, break this down on a personal level. If my personal debt continues to go up and my credit score continues to go down, I might have some troubles come my way. Yes, we are still strong as a nation and still a superpower with the biggest economy in the world, but not a great trend and a trend that powers on with no solution in sight. Several other reports landed this week and for the most part, they were all strong. Jobs, unemployment, payrolls all came in strong and point to a healthy and hot economy causing the Fed to come out and speak to this. And in short, they stated, we may have to keep rates elevated for a longer period of time. Then a possible last rate hike coming later this year, taking all this again into 2024, where they very well could keep rates higher all year to really tame inflation in the economy. As much as everyone hates it, including every economist, the Fed is committed to this and will likely not lower rates at the first sight of a slowdown. They certainly don't want to see this flare up again, so committed to the pain train they are. Third inning doesn't seem so crazy now, does it? Further my point is the fact that just 1% of the nation's homes have changed hands this year. This is another unique way to look at the inventory challenge in terms of homes, changing hands. Again, sellers become buyers and attract other buyers, but only if they list and start the actual domino effect that is the changing hands in real estate. 14 of every 1,000 homes changed hands in the first half of 2023. Now that's compared to 19 of every 1,000 homes in 2019. We removed the anomaly years for a better comparison. Pretty interesting lens to view the inventory challenge through and even more interesting when you unpack it. Biggest changes are with suburban single family four bedroom plus homes, a 32% drop in turnover rates, followed by single family two and three bedroom homes, down 29%. You guys can nerd out on your own and see the rest there. This is an interesting graphic that will play well on social if you want to share it. We just can't build fast enough and listings are way down, so this all points to a healthy but sluggish real estate market. I mean, matrix slow-mo, guys. And again, team, we are taking that slow motion into 2024. We will give you an interactive map so you can see the impact on your hometown. And all that will be in the comment section below. But let me ask you again, what if I told you that we are only in the third inning of the real estate and mortgage slowdown? How much more would your behaviors change right now? This is a show to share with your entire company and on social, but more importantly, it's a show to really take in, digest, and ask yourself in all honesty if your behaviors need to change right now. Let's hope and pray that we're in the ninth inning, but prepare like we are in the third. Hope and pray for the best and prepare for the worst. We'll see you guys next week.